Hey, good that you're here. Um, I'm going to do a challenge, or I'm going to challenge myself today with a zero to one um, deployment of a web server from absolutely zero, locally on my laptop, using Docker tools to create an image, then upload the image to the grid, and then launch that same website on the grid within 10 minutes. Um, so in order to prove and to show that I've got nothing which is locally already prepared, um, let me see, that's obviously not good, so we'll, we'll exit this one, um, and then uh, Docker images, we'll delete this one, Docker RMI minus F, this one, copy, paste, RMI typos will be my enemy in doing it in 10 minutes. So, nothing is running and the images are not there yet. So now we're completely clean. I'll do it all in this directory. Um, and as I said, we'll set a timer. So here's the timer. Um, I'll start it now and then we'll start. So, we're using an existing image, uh, we're going to run it, it's going to be interactive, I'm going to do port forwarding because I want to connect to it locally, 8080, and then do it to port 80, which is the web server, I'm going to use the Ubuntu image, and the latest version of that will be great. So, it's downloading it now from the Docker Hub, we will wait for it to exist, now I need to just, because it's a very minimal image, I will give it the update commands to actually get where all the archives and the packages that we can install exist. That will take a little bit of time, but not too long. And now we do an install of the Nginx web server, and I need an editor to change the default page, so I need VI. Do it. Um, and I think I need to give it some information about my locality or local, uh, which Otherwise, it doesn't flow here, here, here. That's it. So now I've got an editor. Um, there is nothing running uh, in terms of engines. And uh, let's start it manually because, again, uh, we just need it to service the default page. That's it. It's now there. Let's have a look at the page here localhost, port 8080, and that's it. Welcome. Now, let's edit the page so that it's not default anymore. For that, I will just copy this particular paragraph uh, a couple of times. And there we go. I'm not even sure if I think it's wrong, but that is okay. Let's go back to the web browser. And here we have it. It's now a customized page. So, we now have the image. We'll copy the files. From, uh, from the Docker image. Docker provides a facility for that. Docker, copy, uh, and I just need to check first what the process number is. It's this one, copy, Docker, copy. In this particular process, take the root directory and uh, one, zero, two, one. In that directory, it will copy it. Now I'll we'll package it, create a tar bowl out of it, um, and I do it zero to one dot tgz, and I want every file that's here to be in that. That's it. So now we've done. We've created locally a container that runs. We've customized the content, and we now created file which has all of that customization plus all of the executables in it as a starting point for a container on the grid. I have six minutes 50 seconds left which should be good so let's now go to um, the actual three bots so again I'm not going to start three bots I'm not going to create a capacity pool I'm assuming that you can and you will be able to do so I'm going to use the capacity in Vienna I'm going to take two solutions because we want to do building blocks, two solutions to actually deploy. Um, one, I need a network and I need a secure network which is point-to-point -point and private. 
um, and will allow me to connect securely to it with a VPN, so I need a VPN config, the IP range uh, you can choose, I want to use IPv4 because IPv6 is not everywhere and I need to have one access node to terminate my VPN on. Um, this will now be created into a description and it will present me with a um, file that I can use to, uh, and I'll call that as well, 021.conf. Save it, done. So now I've got my network done. Let's go back to the little one up. Here we see that we've got this configuration file, that one. So we do quick up 021.conf. That is not the password. There it is. You do WG. This is up and running. I've now got a working uh, VPN towards my private network. Back to the three one. So the second solution is launching that container image that we have, for which we need to upload it first. So upload it. Um, you can't see this, but I will upload this particular file from here, 0.1.tgz, 0.1.tgz, upload. And what it now does is that it separates all of the metadata, so directory structure, file name, uh, properties, uh, access rights, from the actual binaries and files. So that once you want to start a container, you don't need to do, um, <laughs> okay, so I need to, uh, give it a different name, this is not helping me, five minutes, should still be possible. So we go back here, again mistakes are there to be made, um, move 0 to 1 dot tgz to 0 to 1 dot tar dot gz. That's it, go back to the browser, four minutes, it's going to be tight, super tight. Uh, choose the file, go back to this, I didn't know, didn't accept an extension, I tried it, so go tar.gz, does it again, and it said, like I said, it separates now metadata from the actual files and binaries, um, which makes it very quick to start a container later on. Hopefully this will do it, it's now doing it as we speak. Um, and um, we can now show that in my in my directory zero to one October twenty third quarter past twelve that's it and you can see that the metadata is very very small less than half a meg from a ninety megabyte um, file and the way that the container or zero as knows what to boot and where to get the files is that it uses this. Uh, hub as a, as a file server based on or with the HTTPS protocol. Three minutes left, so copy this one. We have a network. We now go back here and we will now do a generic purpose container. New one, give it a name. So it was halfway through this before. 0 to 1, 0 to 1. Next. Uh, gives very little resources, one virtual core and a gig of RAM. It's enough for one web server. I don't want to, why do I click? Yes, I don't want to add more storage space. I will, like I said, do it in the Vienna based game pool. I will connect it to the 0 to 1 network. I will have this just uploaded F list that I will use. I will have to use CoreX. CoreX is a web based. Um, view into process number one, uh, the, the, the process that starts all the other processes in the container, because I didn't create a start script in the local Docker container, so therefore I need to manually start the NGINX server like I did with the um, Docker container as well. No IPv6 at all, uh, it can select a node for me because I trust all of those 10 nodes to be good and I don't want external logs. Now we'll get um, an IP address suggestion, which I will start pinging from the terminal to see that it actually will um, start that particular container um, as we speak. One minute thirty-seven. Um, so let's hope that this goes fast. Ten dot thirty-five dot two dot two. Ten dot thirty-five dot two dot two. 
obviously it doesn't exist, so it doesn't do anything right now. But if we go back here and we say next and no passing any variables, then what you will see is that it will start actually responding to the ping um, once it's got that container deployed, which is the case right now, and we're ready to go. Um, so we go back to the browser, um, we're ready to go. This is the URL, again, over a private link, over a link which is secure, towards um, the core X process. Uh, in this particular container, it's user bin bash. I have now started by asking Core X to start it for me. Um, a shell, which you can see, a bash shell. I can go into the bash shell and I will get access to the container just like I had it through Docker. And if I do now the same command that I did before uh, and Jinx, then we'll see that there's now Nginx processes. And if I go to the uh, 10.0, 35.2.2. This is the web server that we created um, locally in my Docker. I've got nine seconds left, which I'm really happy with. Um, I transported it, I created it, I transported it, made a bunch of mistakes, but it still um, was able to finish this whole thing um, within uh, 10 minutes, which shows that it's really, really simple, which shows that it's really possible to create very quick and very versatile workloads on the grid. Thank you so much. Have a great rest of your day and uh, see you soon.